It is really exciting here in 2022 for personal home light shows. The developers contributing to open source software like XLights, WLED, and FPP have made setting up a home light show much easier than it was just a year ago. Today, we're going to cover how to create X-Light show sequences for your WLED controlled lights and how to set up FPP with those controllers. Let's get started. In very simple terms, what does X-Lights do? X-Lights works a lot like video. Video is essentially a bunch of pictures lined up and shown to you one by one at a time. If you show the pictures fast enough, like 20 to 40 pictures a second, the pictures will look like they're moving. If you coordinate the sounds with those pictures, it gives the impression that it's all working at the same time. This is the exact same thing with X-Lights. X-Lights essentially creates sequence files that tells the lights in your show when to turn on, what colors, and how bright. Here's how that's done in more detail. Your show computer, in this case FPP, runs a playlist of sequence files along with the corresponding music. The music is then sent to a radio transmitter or to a speaker system. The data for a single frame of the entire show is split up into smaller packets based on where the lights are at which controller. The data packets are then sent to the controllers. The controller takes the packets and then creates a data signal to the lights. The lights then take the top data packet, adjust their RGB LED brightness, and then pass the data down the chain to the next light. This whole process happens 20 to 40 times a second, so we don't want any delays in the process. This is one of the reasons why we chose to use the WT32ETH WLED controllers with physical ethernet connections. This reduces the amount of time it takes for the data packets to get to the controllers. Let's take a look at what's new. Our show last year used FPP 4.5 with an outdated UI that looked bad on mobile devices. There are some recent updates in 2021 and 2022 with X-Lights, FPP, and with WLED that make it much simpler to hook these things together. These updates are the FPP upgrade to 5.0, which gave it a UI overhaul and interface, the WLED 0.13, which allowed DDP data, as well as E131 data, and lastly, X-Lights had a native integration with WLED and FPP. These improvements make integrating WLED and FPP with X-Lights much easier. You can configure it all in X-Lights and it will drive the configuration of WLED and FPP. Let's take a look. Last year, we had to spend a lot of trial and error configuring WLED to use E131 data and recognize starting universes, then configuring FPP to find and talk to these devices. Now X-Lights can talk to your WLED devices and see how many lights they control. Once you've configured your WLED controllers, you can then have X-Lights set up your FPP instance automatically. For this walkthrough, I have two WLED controller boxes. One of those boxes controls the aliens. The other box controls the arches. In order to fit into this room, I only connect a string of 50 to the arch controller, as you can see here. This box controls the arches, and this box controls the aliens. Secondly, the FPP computer. Rather than having my home computer run the house light show, we have a Raspberry Pi 4 with FPP 5.5 running. And lastly, we have an isolated router. This router has no connection to the internet, but it serves up static IP addresses for the Pi as well as two WLED boxes. Just as a reminder, these WLED controllers are WT32ETH01 controllers. That means they have a physical ethernet port. We've covered in previous videos how to flash WLED onto a WT32ETH01 board, but theoretically you could put the ethernet shield on a digiquad and connect. I've attempted to use WLED with multiple ESP32 and ESP8266 controllers, relying on the built-in wireless capability, but each time the performance of the device was terrible. Just make sure that your WLED device is physically hooked in to your show network or your results may vary. Now let's cover routers and static IPs quickly. This won't be a thorough tutorial since every router is different. After you first flash your card, connect the card with the Ethernet cable to your network. Now that we're physically connected to your router, we want to find out our WLED's MAC address. Each router is different. Consult your router's user guide. These screenshots are from the open source DDWRT router software. Now remember, don't hook wirelessly or you'll get your wireless MAC address. Each router is different, but each router should have a section that shows all devices that are physically connected. Find your device MAC address. Each router should also have a section to assign your MAC address to a static IP. Once you've done this, save this and reboot your WLED controllers. They should now be assigned the new IP address and you can check that in your router. We'll start off by making sure our WLED controllers are set up. On the left is the WLED controller for the aliens and on the right is the controller for the arches. Let's start off with the aliens. I go to LED config. You can see that there are two ports. I have one port for the aliens on the left and a second port for the aliens on the right. 
each alien is 192 pixels. There are two ports, and each port controls three aliens. So if I have three aliens on a port, and each of them is 192, three times 192 is 582 pixels. So I have 582 pixels on the left and 582 pixels on the right. Let's take a look at the arch controller. Same thing, we go to LED preferences. There are two ports, three arches on the left and three arches on the right. So I, my controller box is two ports. Each arch is 120 pixels. There are two ports and each port holds three arches. So three times 120 is 360 pixels per port. Now that we're sure that our ports are set up correctly for each controller, let's go over to X lights. Starting with a fresh show folder, you can see here this in the layout tab, I've created the six alien props and six arches I was talking about. We're going to assume that the controller box is somewhere in the middle. That's why the layout for this is kind of strange. You can see this is alien one, two, and three for the left-hand side, and then alien four, five, and six for the right-hand side. Same thing with the arches. Arches one, two, and three are on the left, and arches four, five, and six are on the right-hand side. That's assuming that the controller is in the mi middle, sending data out evenly and uh, power injecting at the end of the alien. Now that we have that, let's set up the WLED for controllers. How do I connect to the WLED controllers? We'll start off by setting up the tree controllers or the alien controllers. So let's add an ethernet. Here, we're going to add, we're gonna name the controller, the tree controller. This is going to be the WLED six foot tree controller. This is our aliens. We're going to set the vendor all the way down here to the bottom to WLED. The model is also going to be WLED. If you have another WLED, a DigiQuad or DigiUno, or one of these other ones, you can use that. But WT, since we're using the WT32 ETH01 board, we can select WLED and the variant will be a, a ESP32 variant. We're gonna leave the layout models and auto size active. And then we're going to set up the IP address. Now that we've set up the, the IP address, this is where it's different. We had to do in the past, we had to do universes and, and channels. We don't have to deal with that anymore. We're going to select DDP. Because we're using WLED 0.13.2, it supports DDP and we can do this. So it makes assigning these a lot easier. All right, now that we've done that, let's make sure that we keep channel numbers unchecked. Now we're going to click the upload output button. What that did is it went out to the WLED controller and it read that information. So we're going to click on visualize. Now you can see uh, the different ports. Here's uh, the six aliens that we've defined and the six arches. Since we're assigning our trees or our aliens to the arches, we notice that the port one controls the left-hand side. So we're going to move all of the alien one, two, and three to the left-hand port and we'll chain aliens four, five, and six to the right-hand port. Now what's really cool is because we did that upload output before, it went out to WLED and looked at our, found the ports and noted how many pixels each one supported since they each support 582. Now that we've set those things up, we'll, we need to set up, let's save this, we'll set up another controller for the arches. So I'm going to add another ethernet. And we're going to call it the arch controller. I'm going to call it the WLED arch controller. And we're going to use the WLED vendor, WLED model, and generic ESP32. I'll leave these two there. And we'll set the IP address to this new one. Okay, we're going to change the protocol to DP, DDP. And we're going to change, keep the channel numbers. We're going to make sure that that's unchecked. We'll upload that upload output, talk to LED, WLED. And now I can visualize it. Oh, we've already connected our aliens. Let's connect our arches. The first th three arches go to the first port. And our next three arches are on our next port. And that's it. We'll save this. And let's take a look at the layout now. Now we can see that it's already connected the controllers to the appropriate ports. Now that we've wired up our controllers to the x -Lite show, let's test a sequence. I've already got a, a test sequence here. Save it to make sure that it handles the new controllers. Okay. I've set up the lights so that we're looking at the lights and I'm going to turn on the lights, transition, and show the demo. And it looks like we've connected up the lights 
as we expected. Now that we've verified x lights can communicate, let's set up FPP. We've got a new Raspberry Pi 4 outfitted with a new version of FPP, version 5.5, and it has the latest UI changes. You can see that it's completely blank. It's ready to be set up. There are no outputs set. Everything is empty, and there's also no content in the file manager. So no sequences have been uploaded, no audio, no video, nothing. So we have a blank slate uh, FPP ready to go. So let's take a look at x -Lights. Here we have x -Lights. And now that we've gotten our controllers working, we've tested it out and the, the sequences work and the controllers are set up, It's we don't want to necessarily set... What we had to do in the past is we've had to go into FPP and set up the IP addresses and set up the E131s and the channels and we'd have to calculate all the, uh, the universes, how many universes and starting universe. And we'd also have to go into WLED and set up the starting universes to match X lights. All that's gone now, and they have a tool called FPP Connect. And as long as this particular application is sitting on the same network as our FPP, it found our FPP. It's version 5.5. We want to make sure that we upload all the media. So this is going to upload all the files that we have specified down here. So it's going to upload, I have two sequence files and one MP4 file in my show folder right now. Uh, the models for um, FPP, so we can do test, we can run tests on FPP, and I also want to make sure, by default, I want to make sure that we hit all in the UDP, UDP column. By selecting UDP out, this will also export all of the, the IP address data that we set up, including the DDP. So let me hit upload. Okay, now that's loaded, let's switch back to FPP. In FPP, if I refreshed, I can see that my sequence files show up, my audio file shows up, and the best part is I don't have to set these channel outputs anymore. You can see that my tree controller and the arch controller got pulled over with the appropriate DDP settings, right start channels, and the right universe sizes. So have, rather than having to set these up and use trial and error to figure out what these are, uh, Xlights does it for you. So now all I need to do is give it a try and see if it actually works. Here is the FPP version 5.5. You see it's a very mobile friendly UI. You can also see that we have the content already loaded up and the out, the channel outputs are set up by X lights. They set all these things up for us. So now all we have to do is to control our light show with our mobile phone. If I go to the status page, I can select different sequences. You notice right now that the WLED controllers are playing their normal playlists, so it's not being controlled by FPP yet. So all I need to do is type on a sequence or a playlist, and it'll start playing. This looks familiar with to our test pattern before. Again, the little bundle of lights down there is going to represent our arches, since we don't have enough room in this room <laughs> to put our arches. But all our test sequence is running. And when the sequence is done, you can see it here in the FPP. that it stops, and the WLEBD controllers go back to their default playlists. This is, comes in really handy so I can control my light show from my mobile device and do it pretty easily. Well, if you've made it all the way through, congrats. That was a lot of material to digest. I put chapters in this video, so if there's a particular part of the configuration you want to go to, you can quickly get to the material you need. If you know of an easier way to wire these things up, or if you have a question, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you enjoy this type of content, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified. As always, thanks for watching Bites of Pie, and good luck on your next DIY light show.